What is going on guys, it's Panjana here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Quake Champions. Now I know this game has been around for a while, but the main reason I haven't covered it until now is because it's been receiving tons of updates and it used to have a pay to entry system. But over the last couple of weeks at the Bethesda E3 conference, they actually announced that you can actually go ahead and install the game now through Steam and you'll be able to keep it forever without having to pay access into it. Now whether or not that promotion is still going on now, you can take yourself over to the link down in the description below to see if it is still free on Steam. But if it's not and you are looking to get this game or you've been playing this game for a while, the main purpose of this video is to ensure that you guys are getting the best FPS possible whilst maintaining a good visual quality for practically every single system out there, regardless of whether you're on a high-end, low-end or medium-end system. This video is going to be educating you guys on how to get the most out of the game itself and do some minor tweaks with inside of your PC to further enhance the performance across the board for Quake Champions and practically every game that you play. And as always guys, if you guys do find this video helpful and you are happy with the results, please leave a like on this video as it helps me out tremendously. Feel free to leave me your results, questions, queries and suggestions for more content or games you wish for me to cover in that comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And last but not least, please do subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification if you wish to be notified instantly whenever I do upload new guides, updated guides to older games, PC maintenance videos and just basically how to get the most out of your games and your machine without having to spend a penny. Right, so with all that said and done out of the way, let's get straight into the video to keep this guide as fast and effective as possible. Right, so to kick things off, what you guys are going to need to do is go into the description down below and there'll be a download link for an FPS increase pack, which has got everything compiled in there in a nice neat package so you guys don't have to go to a million different links to find things. There aren't many files inside of this folder, it's just a very simple package. If you wish to follow along with it, you can do so, or you can use Google and get the original download links yourself. So take yourself down into that description down below and follow one of the download links. If one of them doesn't work, simply try the other one until you download the file, which should be called Quake Champions FPS Pack by Panj. Now this program will require you to either have 7-zip or WinRAR installed to your PC to be able to open it, as it is an archived folder. So if you don't have one of those programs installed, take yourself over to Google, very simple quick Google search for either 7-zip or WinRAR, install one of the programs, come back to this video and you will then be able to follow along. Right, so once you're ready to open up the file, simply right click on the file and then you'll then have the option to extract here. Once you've hit extract here, you'll then be given a folder with an identical name called Quake Champions FPS Pack by Panj. Double click inside of the folder and you'll be given a folder inside of there called Optimizations and Credits. Inside of the credits.txt, you can find the original download links and sources to the original author's website so you can find the latest versions, more in-depth explanations as to what things do, or just pay credits over towards those. It's just a file which links you to all of the sources. And inside of the optimizations folder, you'll be finding two programs in which we're going to be using later on after we're done with the game specific optimizations. And speaking of game specific optimizations, we're going to get straight on into them now. Now, a quick thing to mention before we actually go in and set our in game settings for some of you guys who have had this game installed for a long time or your frequent players, there's actually a fast tweak in which we can do to reset our config files, which can sometimes cause FPS issues if they're slightly outdated. Now, do bear in mind if you do want to follow this step to delete your config files, all of your settings will be reset back to default and you'll have to set them back so please do proceed with caution that is only for this step and it's only if you wish to follow this step which i do recommend most of you do just quickly take a note of what your settings are and you'll be able to put them back on later so if you do wish to follow this step just simply go into the bottom left hand side of your pc type percent app data percent then press enter then go over to the app data folder found here at the top then go into the local folder once you're inside of there simply scroll all the way down until you find a folder called id software go inside of id software Go inside of Quake Champions, Client, Config, and then within inside of here, just simply highlight all of the CFG files, right click, and hit delete. So getting into it, what you guys are going to have to do is either navigate down into Steam or the Bethesda launcher, depending on where you have Quake Champions, and boot into the game. Right, so once you guys have booted into the game, we're going to be starting off with the simple stuff, which is just going ahead and actually optimizing the game settings themselves, just to ensure that you're running on the best config for your machine. To do this, we're going to be navigating over to the top right hand screen and going to the settings cog then following that up by going to the video tab. And with the side of here, we're gonna be setting our options depending on what your system specs are. So we're gonna go through the universal ones, which are ones that apply to everyone, no matter what sort of system you're running on. And we can finish off by fine tuning a few options depending on your system specs. We're gonna be starting off with display mode. I recommend everyone going ahead and setting this to full screen. I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm personally gonna be going with borderless as I'm recording and I don't wanna run into any issues. But after I'm done recording this video, I'll be putting this to full screen. So go with full screen here. You can leave the aspect ratio and resolution to their default values as you don't need to change those. Resolution scale will be coming back to in a few minutes. Target display, believe this is default. Video adapter leave as default unless your graphics card is not selected. In which case, go into the drop down menu and ensure your graphics card is selected. Once you've selected your graphics card and ensure it's set properly, I'm gonna be going down to shadow quality. Now, assuming this is a competitive first person shooter and it's not really a game which emphasizes graphics, even though the game does look really nice, we're actually gonna be turning most of these to the lowest settings possible as the game still looks absolutely fantastic on practically any resolution you're playing and the FPS benefits far outweigh the slight visual bump. So we're gonna be setting shadow quality to low 
low, lighting quality to low, effects quality low, texture quality low, unless you're on a higher end system where you can set this to medium or high, but I'm personally on a pretty high end system and I'm also going to be going with low. Details we're going to be setting to low, post processing is going to be set to low, anti-aliasing low, texture filtering low, set FPS limit, ensuring that you guys go ahead and actually drag this all the way up to the top to set an unlimited FPS if you want the most FPS possible. If you do wish to tie this to your screen's refresh rate, you can do so by setting the custom FPS limit here if you're aiming for a goal. But personally, I'm going to be going with an unlimited frame rate. Horizontal FOV, this is completely personal preference, but do know the higher you have this number set, the lower FPS you'll be getting. It only slightly affects FPS, so don't worry about it too much. But if you want the best FPS possible, I would not set this to the max value. Brightness again, personal preference, set it to whichever you wish to do so. And vertical sync found here, make sure that this is unchecked. Now, going over to resolution scale, which is one of the most important things depending on your system specs. For any of you guys running on a ultra high end to high end machine, you can stick with a resolution scale of 100% if you wish to do so. And you guys can follow the on screen criteria right now to actually follow along and see what resolution scale you should be setting depending on your system specs. So for any of you guys running on ultra low end old systems and you could barely run the game, I recommend going with a resolution scale of somewhere between 25% and 40%. For anyone running in a low-end system, you can go with a resolution scale of around about 40% all the way up to around about 65. For medium-end systems, you can go from a resolution scale of 65% to around about 80%. And for high-end systems, you can go anywhere between 80% and 100% along with ultra high-end systems. Now, like I said earlier on, the PC I'm actually recording this on is not my low-end system, it's actually my high-end system, but I'm gonna be going with a resolution scale of around about 90% as this does drastically increase your FPS and it only slightly tweaks the graphics. Again, the lower you set this, the worse your game is gonna look, but it is best to tweak around with this and find a happy balance because you will be seeing fantastic FPS gains. So I'm gonna be going with 90%. And then once you guys have got everything set with inside of here, you can actually go ahead to the bottom right and hit save. Press yes, and you'll have to restart your game for those changes to take effect, which is fine as we're gonna be closing out of the game until we're done now anyway. Simply once you've set those, quit the game and press yes. Right, so proceeding on from there, what we can actually go ahead and do is actually go back into Steam, go over to Quake Champions, right click on Quake Champions, and then go to Properties. For any of you guys who have the game installed through the Bethesda launcher, you'll have to find out where your game files are installed and access those in your hard drive manually. Starting off with the settings with inside of the Steam Properties tab, I like to go ahead to the Enable Steam Overlay whilst in game and actually uncheck that, as it forces the Steam Overlay to be running over your game at practically all times. Now regardless of what sort of machine you are running on, you could be seeing FPS hits if you have the Steam Overlay enabled. So if you're not often using the Steam Overlay whilst in game, whether it's to invite people or talk to people, if you don't find yourself using it, I'd recommend turning it off. After that, we're going to be going over to the Local Files tab found here at the top, then going over to the Browse Local Files tab, and then the Game folder will open. With inside of the Game folder, we're going to be going inside of the Client folder, going into Bin, PC, and then with inside of here, we're going to be navigating down to Quake Champions, the little application file, and right clicking on the application. Going over to the properties tab with inside of there. Then with inside of the properties tab for the application, we're gonna be going to compatibility at the top. We're then going to be going over to disable full screen optimizations. We're then gonna click on change high DPI settings and find the option for override high DPI scaling behavior and check that. Once you guys have got both of those checked, press okay. Ensure that disable full screen optimizations is also checked still. Then press apply and press okay. Once you guys are done with inside of there, you can simply go ahead and exit out of the files and the Steam properties and minimize Steam. Proceeding on from there, we're now going to be applying some of those optimizations I was talking about earlier on to further enhance the performance with inside of the game. So to start off with doing this, we're going to ensure that your PC settings are set properly for the best performance possible. To do this, we're going to be navigating into the bottom left hand side and we're going to be typing in power, just like so. Once you guys have typed that in, simply find one of the battery icons with the cord going around it. Doesn't matter what the option says, just click on it as long as it has this icon. Then go to the power options tab found here at the top and you'll be brought to the choose a power plan. With inside of here, go to the show additional power plans drop down menu and you'll see a few power plans with inside of here. You might see more than mine, you might see less than mine, but you should definitely be seeing balanced, high performance and power saver. Now for the majority of you watching this video, you should not be seeing the ultimate performance power plan like I have here. And if you wish to unlock that, which I do recommend you do, you can follow the video in the top right hand side of the screen now in the little card, and it will take you to the video on how to actually enable that. It's a short and precise video and I recommend everyone follows it as this is a fantastic power plan and it can really help you get the most out of your machine. So whether or not you want to go with the ultimate performance power plan or the high performance power plan, you can click on either of them if you don't wish to follow the video, select one of them. I'm going to be going with ultimate performance. Once you've selected the power plan, go over to change plan settings. You can set either of these two options to anything you wish to do so, they are personal preference and do not change the outcome of this guide. 
What we're interested in doing is going over to change advanced power settings. With the side of the tab that opens up, we're going to start off by going over to hard disk, turn off hard disk after, then with inside of here, go to the setting, double click on the number which is in there and ensure it is set to zero. Once that's done, hit apply. You can then go ahead and scroll down to the bottom, go to processor power management, go to minimum processor state and maximum processor state. And again, ensure these numbers are set to 100%. If they're not, double click on the number, input 100. Once that's done, go ahead and press apply, press OK, save changes for your power options, and you can then exit out of that tab. Piggybacking off of that step, we can now go ahead and apply one of those optimizations to target our power plan to ensure that everything is enhanced properly. So to do this, we're gonna be going into the FPS pack provided. We're going to be going into the optimizations folder, and you'll find the setup file for CPU core parking setup version 2110. Now a brief explanation as to what this program actually does is it allows you to unpark your CPU cores. It's for you guys out there who are running on multi-core systems, which is probably 90% of you at this point. Windows actually takes around about 20 to 30% of your CPU resources to run on background tasks whilst you're gaming to ensure that everything is running perfectly and everything has a lot of headroom. The problem with that is, is that your gaming application when you're playing games and you're, and you're getting stutterings or frame lag or frame drops, it's only receiving around about 80% of your true CPU power. So unparking your CPU cores will ensure that they're no longer parked and everything can be accessed by an application as and when it needs it. This should not introduce crashing or anything like that. It should not increase heat with inside of your system. It basically just further optimizes your PC towards gaming performance and heavy workloads. And this is something I do for practically every single system I get my hands on, regardless of what the person's doing on it. I always recommend unparking your CPU cores. So to go ahead and actually do this, we're gonna open up the program setup by double clicking and the setup wizard will open up. Go ahead and press next, accept the terms to the license agreement and press next, next and install. Once the program has been installed to your machine, make sure that the launch core parking 3 exe has been enabled there and press finish. Once the program opens up, you might be notified that a newer version is available and you can update to this if you wish to do so, or you can just press close. With inside of here, you should notice that your program looks very similar to mine, but the numbers and settings are slightly different. Now you might be getting a little bit overwhelmed as to what this program does and what it means, but we're only gonna be changing four options with inside of here, so it's actually very simple. We're gonna start off by going over to where it says power data found here at the top left hand side. We're gonna go ahead and click on the drop down menu. Now inside of this drop down menu, we're gonna be selecting the same power plan in which we set earlier on in the video. So if you went for high performance, set this to high performance. If you went for ultimate performance, select it to ultimate performance. Once your power plan has then been set to match the one you set earlier on, we're going to be going down to core parking index. And this is going to be the percentage of the CPU cores that are going to be unparked. So we want this to be set all the way up to 100% to ensure that all of our cores are unparked. We can then go over to frequency scaling index, and we're going to be setting this all the way to 100% as well, as this is the speed of those cores that are unparked. So you want that to be at 100%. And then finally, Turbo Boost Index, we also want that to be 100%, which is the maximum Turbo Boost frequency of all of those cores. Now, before we go ahead and apply this, before any of you guys go ahead and panic, this will not set your CPU to 100% usage all the time. It just allows Windows to have access to all of its potential as and when it needs it. So it's completely fine and safe to do. Once you guys have got these set, go ahead and press apply. You'll then notify that the changes have successfully been applied, press OK, and you can then exit out of the program. Now, assuming that this video is coming to a close and before we restart our machines, ready to go ahead and boot into the game and get on with the final step, I'm going to give you guys a couple more tips in which you can go ahead and do to, to further increase your FPS. There's going to be a couple of videos linked at the end of this video and in the description down below, which will show you guys how to overclock your GPU, which will give you fantastic FPS gains, not just with Inside of Quake Champions, but practically any game you play. It's very fast, simple, safe, and incredibly easy to follow, and I recommend practically everyone watching this video does take the time to go and follow that video. I'm also going to be linking in the description down below and at the end of the video, my guide to speeding up and further optimizing Windows itself for gaming performance to ensure that your system is completely optimized towards gaming performance. That's another video I can highly recommend, and you should be seeing some fantastic benefits from that as well and just another quick couple of pointers i recommend you guys go ahead and actually make sure that you're on the latest gpu drivers as this does play a big part especially to games like quake champions that are constantly being updated more often than not gpu drivers can actually help out a ton especially for you guys who are running on older ones so do actually look into that as well right so assuming we're at this point in the video we can actually go ahead and go down to the bottom left hand side go to the power button right click on the power button and hit restart the reason we're going to be restarting our machines is just to ensure that we are on a fresh boot of windows everything is running with your new unparked cpu and we're good to go Welcome Welcome back to the video guys, you guys should have now have restarted your machines, have Steam back open, be back on this video and ready to continue with the last step, which is going back into the FPS guide provided, going into the optimizations folder and actually getting this little program here called Term Resolution and dragging it onto your desktop. Now again, you're probably wondering what the Term Resolution app does and to keep it brief and simple, what this program basically does is it basically lowers the amount of latency between the hardware and your system, 
the application itself, and the operating system. This benefits you greatly with insider games, especially like Quake, which are Twitch shooters where you need the lowest response time possible, which will actually lower your response time, lower your frame time, increase your frame rate, and can also help stop stuttering with insider games to give you a more fluid experience. I personally use this program with practically every single game out there, regardless of what it is, just to ensure I'm getting the best just to ensure that I'm getting the best experience as a whole. And I also use this when I'm doing things like video editing and using Photoshop, again, just to ensure that my system is running to the best of its ability and is being as snappy as possible. It's a very easy to use and lightweight program. I'm gonna give you guys a short demo on how to use it. So before you go ahead and play your game or open up your application, you wanna go ahead and boot into the program. Once you've booted into the program, you then wanna to go to the bottom left-hand side and click the maximum button, which will set the lowest value possible for your machine. You should then see the current resolution number will drop. At this point, what you guys can go ahead and do is actually minimize the program, go ahead and boot into your game, load up your application, do whatever you need to do, play for however long you wish to do so. Once you're then done playing, go ahead and maximize the program, press the default button, and you can then exit out of the program. So like I said, it's extremely lightweight and simple to use. And with that being said, that is the guide complete. So you guys can go ahead, boot into time resolution, hit maximum, go over to Steam or wherever you have Quake Champions installed, and go ahead and hit play. And there you guys have it, the Quake Champions Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you are happy with the results from this guide, please do leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Please do share this around with anyone in the community, any teammates, friends, family, or whoever you think could benefit from the optimizations in this video, just to ensure that it gets into the right hands and can help the right people. And again guys, please do press that subscription button and the bell notification if you wish to stay up to date with content like this, or just leave me any suggestions, questions, queries, or results down in that comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to engage with you guys. As I said, there'll be a few bonus videos at the end of this video which you guys can actually navigate to to further optimize your machine. If you have a bit more spare time, I do highly recommend watching those videos if you're really serious about getting the most out of your machine without having to pay a penny. But with all that said and done out of the way, thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Panjano, and I am out.